What is good? What is good? I am back live on TikTok, pre-recording for YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. This is the one and only Paul Pickett, the host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Um, we're going to have a short little episode today. Um, don't forget that this podcast the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, CastBox, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeart, Radio Player FM, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, and a bunch more. It's also sponsored by Promo Palace LLC or PromoPalace.biz. The online market promotions for your music, product, or your brand. Check out PromoPalace.biz. If you're a cat lover, you're a dog lover, you like t-shirts and hoodies, please check out New Litter Apparel at NewLitter.com. Also, for Shizzle, I got to shout out Dizzle, Dizzle Brand. Just add ice, do your Dizzle, DizzleBrand.com. Check them out. Got a bunch of recipes on there. Dizzle's hitting a bunch of stores on the West Coast. And, of course, got the bottle right here, Dizzle. You know. I'm going to get into a few things. Uh, I'm going to get into my predictions for this coming up. Weekend um, NFL, we got Cincinnati playing the Jets. Of course, I got Cincinnati Bengals on that one. Jets don't stand a chance. Uh, Tennessee Titans versus the Colts. Colts are starting. Like, Wentz is actually playing a lot better lately, you know. Um, but I'm going to go with Tennessee because uh, Derrick Henry is, I mean, he's a monster right now, man. 800 rushing yards. I think he's got, like, over 200-something yards, more than the next uh, leading rusher. Definitely going to get the Russian crown this year. He stays healthy. Uh, we got Rams versus the Texans. Texans are god-awful, terrible. So I'm picking the Rams over the Texans. Uh, Browns versus Pittsburgh, Steelers. Um, Cleveland, I mean, they were supposed to be – had high expectations coming into the season, but they don't really stand a chance, man. But I'm going to go with, um, I don't know, man. It's a tough one. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Eagles versus Detroit. I'm going with the Eagles. Detroit is just terrible. I guess, um, I guess Jared Goff is it as good as he thought he was at the Rams because he can't even win a game in Detroit. So that should just go to show you that Jared Goff wasn't really that good. It was really everybody around him, all the pieces around him. Um, San Francisco versus Chicago. Neither one of them is really that good. I'm going to go with Chicago. They're three and four. San Francisco's two and four. Carolina versus Atlanta. Like I said, Carolina started out like 3 and 0. I said pump the brakes. They done lost four straight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Atlanta's getting a little bit hot. I'm going to go with Atlanta. I'm going to go with Atlanta on this one. Um, Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. Do I really got to pick a, a team on that one? The Bills. The Bills. Uh, the Patriots versus the Chargers. We're going with um, Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Jacksonville and Seattle. I'm going to go with Jacksonville. I'm going to go with Jacksonville. Neither one and one, one and five and two and five. I mean, Seattle don't stand a chance of doing anything this year, especially with Russell Wilson out. Washington football team, If don't know if they're ever going to pick an actual mascot, but I'm 
But um, versus Denver, neither one are really good. I'm going to go with Denver. Then we got Tampa Bay, New Orleans. I'm going with Tampa Bay. Tampa Tom and the squad. Uh, Dallas and Minnesota. I'm going with Dallas. Giants and KC. I'm going with KC. And, of course, Arizona beat Green Bay. Um, Arizona's the real deal, man. Oh, my bad. Arizona lost to Green Bay. Let me rephrase that. Arizona lost to Green Bay. Arizona's still the real deal, though. I mean, because they're still – they're 7-1. and one. But this – I think it's going to be Packers and the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers again in the NFC Championship. And – um. I don't know that Green Bay can get over the hump yet. I don't know if they got enough to get over the hump. Um, Packers haven't done enough to get over the hump, I don't think. It really looks like the Buccaneers. Actually, you know what? Depending on how good the Cowboys stay, I mean, this could be the year for the Cowboys to, to make that run. This is the Cowboys one. Like, this is going to be one of their best chances in a long time. Based on their record. I mean, they got the division on lock. You know, they definitely got the division on lock. And I saw something on um, what they were saying. Right now, Patrick Mahomes is not a top five quarterback. And they listed their top five quarterbacks right now this year. And I have to agree, this year, this year right now, Patrick Mahomes is not a top five quarterback. You got Josh Allen over him this year. Joe Burrow was balling out over him this year. Um, Dak Prescott is doing is doing better than him. Aaron Rodgers, Tampa Tom, Kyler Murray, like it's right, man. He's like Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. Patrick Mahomes is like the eighth best quarterback in the NFL this year. You know. Compared to everybody else. And that's the thing. Year to year, man, things can change. Sometimes, because I've seen athletes have this one year where they ball out. Just one great year. And then people put them on this pedestal. When well, you just have one great year out of And I ain't saying Patrick Mahomes only had one great year. But I've seen players do it. They have one great year and people put them on this pedestal. Like, they're, you know, something great. And if you do, you only great for one year. Out of your whole career, I wouldn't say you're a great. You you had a great career. Like um, Terrell Davis had two great years as a running back, and that's it. Just two, and that was the two years they won the Super. He rushed two thousand yards back to back, and that was pretty much it. That was his two great years. But Patrick Mahomes right now is not a top five quarterback. I do agree with that. Not. Not right now. Even I mean, Lamar Jackson, you could probably put over him this year. I mean, right now, and, and the MVP right now for the year is Kyler Murray, Aaron Rodgers, and Dak Prescott, man, I would say a top three. If you want to throw in Justin Herbert, I mean, he's balling out. But they do got two losses. Cowboys got one loss. Packers got one loss. Uh, I mean, Tom Brady actually, too. I mean, it's going to be tough, man. There's no telling who's going to win the MVP this year. I mean, Kyler Murray's balling out. Tampa Tom is balling out. Aaron Rodgers is the bad man that Stephen A. Smith says he is. Balling out. Dak Prescott doing his thing. Um, Justin Herbert doing his thing. Yeah, but right now, I mean, I would say the 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 top four in a top four MVP candidates are in the NFC. You know, NFC looking pretty good right now too. You know, um, NBA get into some scores. Um, Detroit uh, lost to the Sixers, one hundred two to one ten. Atlanta. Lost to Washington, 111-122. Washington is actually looking good right now, and I'm going to pull them up right now 
on paper, they got a good squad. Chicago got beat by New York. New York is actually balling out right now. They're looking pretty good. Um, Utah still undefeated. They ba they waxed the Rockets. And Dallas beat the Spurs. And Memphis beat the Golden State Warriors, which they should have. The Golden State Warriors technically, man, past Steph Curry, they don't really got much going on. You know, and and I'm just looking at on paper, man. Washington Wizards, they got a starting five of Catavius Caldwell Pope, Kyle Kuzma, who got championship um, rings, a ring, got a championship ring. They got Montrez Harrell, who's been balling out. Uh, Bradley Bill, uh, Davis Burton, Denny Avedija. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And they got um, Spencer Dinwiddie, who actually didn't play last night, and they still won. They had Aaron Holiday start at point guard with Bradley Bill, Montrezl Sorrell at center, Kyle Kuzma, and Contavious Caldwell Pup. That's not a bad starting five, man. You know? Of course, there's Hawks, man. I mean, the Hawks got a, a nice squad. DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, Punk Capella, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Trey Young. Uh, Kevin Herter, Danilo Gari, and Lou Williams and Solomon Hill, man. They got some ballers, man. Uh, let me pull up this uh, Rockets. I want to see something. Jalen Green. Jalen Green at 13 points. Jalen Green was my pick for Rookie of the Year, man, coming in. Right now, he's definitely not Rookie of the Year. Right now, looking like Scotty Barnes might be Rookie of the Year or somebody else. So Jalen Green's got to get it going. He had one good game, but he's had some nine points here, nine points there. You know. Okay. And let's see. Any big thing on NBA.com. Not really big. Um, let's go over our scoring leaders right now. Season scoring leaders. Uh, Ja Morant is balling out right now. He's number one in the league in scoring. Ja Morant could actually, I could see Ja Morant winning a scoring title this year. I could see that. Steph Curry and Ja Morant fighting for the scoring title. You got Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, of course, is balling out. Anthony Davis has to ball out because he didn't do much of nothing last year. Carl Anthony Towns, which he pretty much got a ball out to. He's been in the league too damn long, and, and he's only been in the playoffs like one time, and that was when like Jimmy Butler was pretty much um, on the team. And ever since then, they ain't even made the playoffs. Giannis doing Giannis things. C.J. McCollum, Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes definitely ain't going to stay up that high too long. Jason Tatum. Miles Bridges is balling out. Miles Bridges keeps up doing what he's doing. That could be a big jump. He'll probably get most improved player of the year if he keeps balling out like he is. And then the Hornets are going to have to play him, man. If not, I mean, pay him. Excuse me. They're going to have to pay him because if they don't pay him, man, then he's going to go out in the market and get a lot of money. They offered him $60 million, but he's he's averaging 25 a game right now. If he even balls out at 20 a game, this year, at 20 a game this year, 20 and 10 this year, he's worth a hundred million. He's worth a hundred million. Uh, Brandon Ingram balling out, Zach Levine, Anthony Edwards. And that's the thing. Minnesota's got two of the top 15 scorers in the league right now. And that could possibly stay that way. So if Minnesota doesn't get to the playoffs with two of the top 15 players scores in the league, that is terrible. And so does the Celtics. And Celtics ain't looking too good right now. They but they're gonna have to get things on. And, and they had a turnaround over so there's been a turnaround in some of their players. Not too many. You know. I am gonna get this little um topic. I just real I just found out what this let's go Brandon thing was all about. Um I I saw like Officer Tatum, Brandon Tatum talking about it. I almost thought it had something to do with him because his name was Brandon. And I didn't really understand. Like, the song, I guess the song that the artist put out, um, 
Bryce Grayson or whatever, or whatever his name is. It's number one on iTunes. It's called Let's Go Brandon. Apparently, Let's Go Brandon is actually a political thing, and it's a sports-related topic as well. So it kind of fits with this podcast. Apparently, they were at a, um, I want to say it's a Red Sox game. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But they were at a baseball game, and the crowd was yelling, F Joe Biden. And the reporter tried to, you know, being reporters telling lies like they tell lies all day, every day, said the crowd was shouting, let's go, Brandon. Now, there was a guy being interviewed, and I do believe his name was Brandon. His first name was Brandon. But the crowd was not yelling, let's go, Brandon. They were yelling, F Joe Biden. Biden. So they've made now they made this thing out of it now where let's go branding branded means F Joe Biden. You know, and they got the t shirts out there and whatnot. And it made me think that people act like Trump was the most hated president in the world. What slogan does he what metaphorical slogan out there does Trump got for F? Donald Trump. I ain't seen one yet. I ain't seen one. And I'm going to tell you what, man. Trump might have a lot of haters, but he got way more, way more fanatics and loyal supporters and loyal fan base than sleepy, slow Joe. Like Joe Biden, man, people only voted for Joe Biden just because they hated Donald Trump. When you're, when you're voting for somebody in office, that's the wrong way to go about it. It's like, I'm going to vote it, vote for this guy just because I hate that guy. If the other guy is terrible at his job too, then why do you vote for anybody? That's the thing. This idea that you have to vote, that you have to pick a choice. Like, if, if there's no clear-cut choice, why do you vote you know, and all you people out there that are like super like Trump haters and act like Trump's the worst president ever and the most hated ever. Um, that's not even true. That's not true. Jimmy Carter was pretty terrible. Ronald Reagan, a lot of people hated Reagan. You know, there's a lot of presidents that a lot of people hate. A lot of people hated Bush. George George Sr. and Jr., you know, there's people that hated Clinton. You know, every president gets a lot of hate. It's like half hate and half love, you know what I'm saying? But this idea that Biden is, is like this beloved president, hell no. He's one. Nobody can name one thing that this guy has done right. I can sit there and wait. One thing, I mean, one thing that he's done right. Nobody can name it because there isn't, you know. And he's got a lot of hate, too. And he's going to go down as one of the most hated presidents ever, too. And I guarantee he's not getting a second term. No chance in hell does Sleepy Slow Joe, Let's Go Brandon, F. Joe Biden get a second term, man. This we're, we're not even a year into this guy's term, man. This guy hasn't done one thing right, man. Not one thing right. Not one thing. He's the COVID, the way he's handling COVID, disaster. The economy's become a disaster. Fire people because they don't want to get vaccinated, disaster. Trying to force people to get vaccinated, disaster, border, disaster, racial issues and tensions, disaster, Afghanistan, disaster, pipeline, disaster, inflation, disaster. The guy has no charisma whatsoever. He, I mean, when he speaks, I mean, you freaking... 
you you damn near you about to fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? It's like when I drive, like when I'm in a car and we're driving like for hours, man. I get tired as hell, get sleepy as hell. That's that's how it is listening to this cat, man. Like, first of all, we need a president that has energy and enthusiasm about his job, you know. Not somebody who needs uh, a gallon of coffee before he, he even speaks. And he needs a, a freaking an, um, an interpreter and a re-educator and, and all types of things just to just to speak, you know. We don't need a president that needs somebody to help him walk up the stairs. We don't need that. If you can't even walk up the stairs on your own, man, how the hell are you going to run a country, man? You can't. There's no way you can run a country. You can't even walk up the damn stairs on your own. You can't even read a speech. You can't run this country, man. I'm sorry. I freestyle all my podcasts. Top of the dome. Just blah, 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 blah. spit. Say what I got to say. I don't need no teleprompter. I don't need no script, man. But Sleepy Slow Joe does, so by it's bogus, you know. This guy's going to go down as one of the most hated presidents ever, too, because he, he's done an awful job in literally 10 months, and we still got three years of this, this BS. You know, and I want to thank all you complete idiots that voted for Joe Biden. You know, I'm sorry, man. He's he's worse than Trump. I don't care what anybody says. He's worse. Nothing, I mean, nothing has gotten better under his watch. It's gotten worse. It's all gotten worse. You know. But, yeah, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. About to give you the shirt. You know, show my support because that's what I do. Once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. This is another episode of the Paul Pickett Podcast. This is episode 69. Used to be one of my favorite numbers. Of course, not now. Now it's just uh, 68 and I owe you one. Ain't no 69 and no more my age and whatnot. But, uh, don't forget my podcast. Um, the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, Castbox, TuneIn, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, Slacker, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and more. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow. If you're on live on TikTok, hit the follow. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe. Facebook, hit the like. Instagram, hit that follow. Don't forget Instagram TV. Also, we'll get a video version of my podcast as well as my Facebook fan page and Twitter as well and dozens of other platforms. You could just Google the Paul Pickett podcast. You know, you got the banner behind me, Paul Pickett, P-A-U-L-P-I-C-K-E-T-T. Once again, I'm your host, Paul Pickett. It's Common Sense Podcast. Don't, don't forget to check out New Little Apparel at newletter.com. Also check out Dizzle. Brand. Last episode, I had the uh, the hoodie on for y'all. Dizzlebrand.com. Check us out. You got a bunch of recipes on there coming soon to a liquor store at a bar near you. Once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Common Sense Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, your source for sports, music, politics, world events, and more. Peace, and I'm out.